Good morning. Good morning. Just judging, I'm sitting on the front row, but just judging by your enthusiasm this morning, it sounds like most of you are excited to be here. Pastor Weaver said in the early service, I've worked with him for about 35 years, which couldn't be true because uh, I'm not even 35 yet, but <laughs> actually have worked together for almost 21 years, and uh, the church has been here this fall 28 years, and I've been thrilled to be part of it uh, these years, and so happy to be here this morning. I am going to share a, a series of the next three Sundays, uh, if I, I've entitled it Life is a Highway, and uh, so we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about that. We'll turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at a couple of verses of Scripture there. Uh, you probably recognize this, this title. I, I borrowed it from Disney, if that's okay with you, uh, or uh, actually Rascal Flats. You remember that, that, that group did this song, Life is a Highway. They made it uh, famous, you know. The, the, I guess the Disney movie is Cars. How many of you have seen, seen the movie? You heard the song. So the opening line of the, of the song states, life is like a road that you travel on. And so we're going to be looking at our lives and how the Bible makes a lot of connections, uh, comparisons to our life being like a path or like a road. I first want to share this passage of scripture with you from Ephesians chapter 5. And it says this in the New Living Translation. It says, so be careful how you live. Many versions will say, if you've got a different version than that, it would say something about how, be careful how you walk or make sure that you walk circumspectly. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtless, thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Okay, so life, life being a highway, it's like a path, like a, like a road. And there are a number of scriptures that kind of help prove that point. You've heard some of these. Uh, Psalm 23.3 says, He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Psalm 37.23, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. Psalm 119.105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my, my path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will do what? Du make your path straight or direct your paths. Exactly. So that's just scratching the surface of all those that, that compare our life uh, to life on a path, a journey. So we're on this journey of faith, life being a highway. It's an appropriate illustration for, for many of us, or most of us, if not all of us here. I'm sure some of you feel like uh, you're going through life in a fast lane. Your, your wish is that you, you just wish that life would slow down a little bit so that you can enjoy it. How many uh, feel like life is just going by at a breakneck speed? You feel like life is happening in a fast lane. Definitely, uh, many of us can relate to that. There may be some who have gone through some serious construction zones in your life, personally. And there may be some here this morning that would admit that you're on the entirely wrong road in life. You know it. Today's a, a, a great opportunity as we talk about this. Uh, we're going to give you opportunity to respond at the end as I share this message. I want all of us to be thinking about where we are on this journey of life, this journey of faith. So if you're going on a trip, you need a destination. That's the title of the message this morning is Destination. So if you're going on a trip, you need a destination, you need directions. I wonder how many in the room are a little directionally challenged. I noticed this, this hand up over here on the front row. She's, she's my wife. And uh, I'm sure we all have stories that we can tell about this. And I have a, a, maybe more than one or two that I could tell about getting lost in Los Angeles at midnight on a Saturday night, early Sunday morning, and being stuck in a traffic jam. We were at the Dodgers baseball game, only like maybe a couple of miles from our hotel. After driving for about 30 minutes with Jeannie navigating in the, you know, this is before, before a GPS and smartphones. Remember those big books that they got maps in them? <laughs> Remember those? We stopped at a gas station it was about 12.30 in the morning after, after about a half an hour driving and thinking, this just doesn't seem right to me. We should be there by now. Oh, I think we're on the right road. 
I finally saw lights off of the, off of the, off of the highway, the freeway. We're in Los Angeles, okay? I'm, I'm not familiar with Los Angeles. There's a lot of roads in Los Angeles. There's a lot of lanes in Los Angeles on the highway. So we got off. I saw these lights, and I found I had to weave through this neighborhood where there was no lights on any house. All the, all the windows had bars on them. And um, I'm thinking, this seems strange, a little scary. We're, we're in a, with, with a couple of friends. We're in a little uh, 78 Datsun 210 and, um, with Montana license plates, and we're driving in, in L.A. Well, I find later that I'm in East L.A. So pull off and then we go to this gas station where they got the big lights and there's a guy, an attendant that's sitting, what, reading a newspaper in a lawn chair. And so I grab the, the, the book with all the big maps and I take it out to, the, to this guy at the, at the gas station and I said, excuse me, uh, I wonder if I could, uh, could, could get some help with directions. And he just stuck his hand out and said, $10. I'm not from California. I don't know how things work. I just decided I can figure this out myself, you know. And then he says, no, come back here. I'm just teasing you. He said, you're not from here. And I said, no. He knew I was from Montana. I saw it on the license plates. And uh, he could tell just by looking at me that I didn't fit into the area where, where I was at. And he said, you're, you're not in a good place. And I said, well, help me figure out how to get out of here. It took us about another half hour, 45 minutes, because we got in a traffic jam. At 12.30 in the morning in Los Angeles, Sunday morning, we're in a massive traffic jam. I don't ever want to live in Los Angeles. I guess that's what I'm saying. But thankfully that my wife, you know, for her navigational skills, we got to experience that. And now it's a sermon illustration that's happened over and over and over again. (laughs) Little did we know back then, Jeannie, we could get so much uh, mileage out of that, yeah. I didn't tell that story in the early service. I might have hinted that she w- was kind of weak at navigating skills, but uh, <laughs> being directionally challenged. So I started to say, you know, uh, in, this, in this road of life, you know, in any trip that we're going to take, we need a destination. If you're going to use your GPS or your smart device, I don't know if you've ever used Google Maps, but if you're going to get directions to somewhere, it takes two things where you're at right now, and the destination where you want to go. If you're going to get directions from this, you've got to have those two things. So a destination is very important for you um, if you're going to get directions to go somewhere. Isaiah chapter 35, a couple of verses here that I, want, that I want to read to you. It says this, And a great road will go through that once deserted land, and it will be named the Highway of Holiness. Some versions say the way of holiness or the holy road. It reminds me of a song that, uh, well, it doesn't remind me of a song. It reminds me of a song that I, I've, I've heard about another highway. You ever heard that song on the radio back in the 70s, 80s? It's a, not a highway to holiness. It was a highway to, highway to hell, yes. But on this road, this highway of holiness, it, it goes on to say that evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there, okay? This is God's highway. This is the highway of holiness. It's talking about a road, a path, a highway that we as Christians should find ourselves on. We should find ourselves on this highway, the highway to holiness, a spiritual road that we need to be on that is leading us to a place that God has prepared for us. Some of us here are on a detour, okay? Just the reality is, is life happens, and you might currently at this time be on a detour. And some of you on this highway of holiness, maybe you may have gotten off and you're totally lost because you're directionally challenged when it comes to the spiritual journey. So this morning, we've got some good news. You can get yourself back on this highway, Okay, you can get yourself on this road. This is a road exclusively for God's people that is heading to the place that God has for us. Uh, you won't get lost. It says that only the redeemed are traveling on this, on this road. If you're not on that road, we're going to give you opportunity to uh, respond at the end of the message, to give you opportunity to make a decision to choose Jesus, to follow his road that's leading to eternal life. So earlier, you know, I was talking, I, I started talking about this idea of destination, going on a trip. The most important thing that you need is destination. You have to have a start 
and you need to have a destination if you're going to get directions for how to get there. You've got to have a destination. There's one simple phrase that I want you to get today, and it's uh, not that I have a pointless message. I have one point. One point that I want you to remember, and I think that you can remember this. And, 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 and today it might sound really simple, but, but here's the point. The point is this. Your direction determines your destination. Okay? Your direction determines your destination. It's your direction, not your intention that determines your destination. And that, and that works physically, that works uh, in every of, area of your life, whether it's financially, relationally, spiritually, whatever it might be. So if you wanted to go to Kansas City, if you're not directionally challenged, you know that you can get out here onto the interstate that goes around the city of Des Moines, you can get on I-35, and it will take you straight to Kansas City. And if you keep traveling on that, on that uh, interstate, it will get you to Wichita, and it will get you to Oklahoma City. It will get you to Dallas-Fort Worth. And I learned in the earlier service, it will actually take you to Waco, Texas. <laughs> Might be a person here that's from Waco. <laughs> Pastor Weaver. I told him I always thought it was wacko, but that's okay. <laughs> this. So... You will get to Kansas City if you get on that going that direction because your direction determines the destination, okay? That's how, that's how it works. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 7, and we're going to look at this story, look into a story here, uh, the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. Solomon is sharing the story. You know, he's a man of great wisdom, a man who had some experience in life. And uh, he's kind of given us a little bit of insight as he's watching this young man uh, that may lack a little bit of direction in his life. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. We're going to read through the end of the chapter here. He says, while I was at the window of my house looking through the curtain, I saw some naive young men and one in particular who lacked common sense. He was crossing the street near the house of an immoral woman, strolling down the path by her house. It was at twilight in the evening as darkness, deep darkness, fell. I don't know you, you, whether you've heard this story, read this or not. You can already tell something crazy is getting ready to happen, right? This guy's walking. He's a little naive. Uh, not, not, not you know, not, not a lot of common sense. He walks by the house of an immoral woman and it's getting dark at night. Kind of got an idea where the story's heading? All right. Verse 10, the woman approached him, seductively dressed and sly of heart. She was brash, rebellious type, never content to stay at home. She is often in the streets and markets soliciting at every corner. She threw her arms around him and kissed him. And with a brazen look, she said, I've just made my peace offerings and fulfilled my vows. You are the one I was looking for. I came out to find you, and here you are. Wow. She said, my bed is spread with beautiful blankets, with colored sheets of Egyptian linen. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses, for my husband is not home. Mm. He's away on a long trip. He's taken a wallet full of money with him and won't return until later this month. So she seduced him with her pretty speech and enticed him with her flattery. He followed her at once. Mm. Just like that, she had him in her, in her snare. Like an ox going to the slaughter, he was like a stag caught in a trap awaiting the arrow that would pierce its heart. He was like a bird flying into a snare, little knowing it would cost him his life. So listen to me, my sons, and pay attention to my words. Don't let your heart stray away toward her. Don't wander down her wayward path, for she has been the ruin of many. Many men have been her victims. Her house is the road to the grave. Some versions say the road to Sheol. Her bedroom is a den of death. So in this story, we've got this young man who is, says that he's naive and he lacks common sense. He's inexperienced, he's simple, he's lacking judgment, 
He's at the stage of life where anything a parent or another adult tells him, he's thinking he's smarter. Ah, they don't really know what they're talking about. Any of you ever been there in life? As a, as a child, maybe as a parent, you've heard that kind of talk before. Solomon, this man of wisdom, he's, he's viewing this scenario from a perspective inside of his room, but he's also uh, viewing this from a perspective of knowing where this is leading. This young man sees, sees this as, a, as an exciting uh, event, but Solomon sees it not as an event at all. It's about a, it's about a path with a predictable destination. Verse 15, said, the woman says, you're the one I was looking for, and I have found you. Listen to me. If we don't have aim in our life, if, we're, if we don't have direction, or we're without a destination, here's the deal. We're gonna be unstable and vulnerable to all kind of temptation. Temptation is always seeking us out. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how long you've been a Christian, how long you've been coming to church. I don't care about any of that. Temptation, we're all susceptible, and temptation is always seeking us out. God said to Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must subdue it. You must master it. So this immoral woman who represents temptation, who represents sin, has a strategy. And as you go back, if you want to go back and read through this later, uh, she, it says that she's dressed to allure the men. She's bold in her approach. She invites him over to her place, and she has an answer to every objection before he ever even objects. She persuades him with smooth talk, and she eventually traps him. So I had this experience when I was in college. I sold books and Bibles door to door, and I've told stories about this before, and some of you maybe heard this story. Uh, but I found myself in a situation uh, much like this. You know, I'm out working 80 hours a week, knocking on doors, trying to sell education books and Bibles. This happened in Texas in the summer of 1988. So I am older than 35, just so you know. Um, 1988, and... Uh, it was a Saturday morning. It was a sunny, uh, warm day in Texas. I had about 45 days of stretch where it was 100 plus degrees in Texas. I don't know why anyone would live there. But, um, oh, actually, I, I was born in Texas, so I claim Texas. It's just, I'm, it's just, I'm looking out seeing Pastor Weaver with this goofy look on his face. And so, <laughs> so this Saturday, Saturday morning, and I, you know, the sun's out, and it seems like a nice day, and you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that I'm going to sell some, some books this day. And, uh, you know, it's hard when you're not, I don't know if any of you have experience going door to door uh, selling things. Anybody, anybody here have, have experience in life doing that? It's a hard, hard thing when you knock on doors and time after time after time after time, you get rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected. You knock on door, you don't get in a door. People won't answer the door. All kinds of crazy things uh, that happen. But this particular Saturday morning, I was in this neighborhood, and, and uh, there was a lady working out in her yard, and I thought, okay, here, I can strike up a conversation with somebody. I don't have to try to get in the door uh, to talk to them. And so she was out in her yard and struck up a conversation, and before I could even, like, say much to her, she said, why don't you come in, and I'll get you some lemonade. And I'm thinking, it's hot outside. Hey, and she's offering to bring me into her house where I can demo my books. So she goes into the kitchen. I'm in the living room. I find this place on the sofa. I've got my book bag here. I'm pulling out the books that I'm going to show her. I've got everything ready. I position myself at this place on the sofa where she can sit right across from me. And, you know, I can demo the books and do, do the thing that I'm supposed to do. And she comes back with a lemonade, hands me the lemonade. And instead of sitting right there across from me, she sits like right, right here right up next to me. We're the only two people in the room, only two people in the house. And, um, you know, my first reaction is just like, okay, move over, move space, kind of turn, and she moves right up against me. <sighs> I'm not quite sure what to do, but, you know, in the, in, the, in the process of things here, she tells me that her husband and her kids are gone for the weekend, um, you know, her husband's a doctor, and 
I'm, I'm, I'm so cute and handsome. And, and she puts her, puts her hand like right inside my leg right here. And I mean, I'm like, uh, what do I do? What do I do? Now, if I didn't have direction, if I didn't have a destination for my life, for a, for a 20-year-old young man to sit in a home with a pretty lady who's inviting me in, offering me lemonade, telling me I'm handsome, telling me I'm cute, telling me I'm good looking, it would have been a perfect setup. But listen, I had, I had destination in my mind. I have direction for my life. And everything of that direction tells me, get out of here. I didn't know what to say. I, it's like I couldn't even formulate words. I'm going, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I, uh, what came out of my mouth was, I can tell you're not interested in what I'm trying to sell here. <laughs> and I fold up my books and I'm trying to stuff them in my bag. And as quick as I can, I'm trying to hit the door, you know? I had other friends who, who were selling books with me that summer that had stories similar to this that ended very differently. I heard all the sort of details. Listen, that could have turned out one way, but here's the deal. I had destination. I had direction for my life. I didn't even have that story in my notes, but I was afraid it might come out. So there's always sin, there's always temptation, and, and, and it has a strategy, and it's, and, and it's out there to take us away. And if we're going to combat that temptation in our lives, we have to have destination in mind. We have to have direction. We need God's wisdom. We need his word. Proverbs 7, 4, that's two verses before we started talking about this immoral woman. It says, Proverbs 7, 4, it says, love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Here's what we need. We need wisdom. We need godly insight. We need direction. See, I'm sure this young man, he was all excited because she said, I I came looking for you and I found you. So flattering. And he's thinking, you know, I'm a rock star. He's excited. She, She wants him. She came out to find me. She wants me. That's what he was saying. But this is not what Solomon was seeing. You ever had those moments where you're, you're looking at a situation from a distance? Maybe it's like you're in a parking lot of a grocery store and, and you're seeing this car backing out of its spot uh, and, you, and you can tell that they don't see that there's another car or another person that's right in their path. And uh, you, you're watching this unfold. They don't have an idea. You see everything. So Solomon is, is, is watching this with perspective, watching this unfold. He knew what was going to happen. He knew and knows the path is leading this young man's life where it's leading him. And he says, it's going to cost him his life. But this man is totally unaware. This young man, I'm sure, is thinking, ah, you've got this all wrong. This is, this is just a, a, a little romantic encounter. It's just, a, it's just a one-night deal. It's just a one-time event. We're not going to hurt anybody. It's just two consenting adults. We're okay. And Solomon is saying, no. This is life and death. This is leading to a destiny. You see, it's not about something that you do versus, it's not just about something that you do, it's about where you're heading. It's not about an event, it's about a direction. And it's leading him in the course of a direction that will take him to a place, a destination that he doesn't want to go. He may not see it at this point right now, but ultimately if he could step back and look at the whole scenario, he would choose something very differently. It's the immediate versus the ultimate. See, it may not be a woman coming out saying, I've looked for you and I've found you. But think for a minute of any addiction, whether it's spending or eating or pornography or anything. You're caught in a trap. You're concerned with the immediate. You're not considering the ultimate. It's the here and now versus tomorrow. You see something, it catches your attention, you can't help it, it's on sale, you don't have to put any money down, you just put it on your credit card, you buy it now, you pay for it later. And then you wake up the next morning and you said, I bought this car, how am I going to pay for it? It, that's, That's what happens. You see, we can't see everything. What we see is the immediate what we're doing, what we're feeling. It's the right here and now. It's what God sees. 
uh, when God sees the direction that we're heading. He sees the ultimate destination of the path that you've chosen. He sees what's gonna happen tomorrow. You see, we have to come to a place of saying, God, I'll trust you. God, I'm gonna trust you because you see what I can't see, you know what I don't know, and you're able to help me navigate through this. So this story is talking about adultery, but we can broaden this scope to include all kinds of behaviors, whether it's spending patterns, uh, pornography, inappropriate sexual behaviors, relationships, uh, alcohol, drugs, any of those things that you know are controlling you and that are not right. It's not about an event. It's ultimately about a destination or a particular path that you have chosen. And Proverbs, uh, at the end of that, that passage, says many are the victims that she has brought down. The age-old response is something like this, it'll never happen to me, lie. It's not a problem for me, lie. I'm not gonna become addicted, lie. Lie, 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 liar, liar. Pants on fire couple of you, you all were thinking and only two people said it. <laughs> you see, the Bible tells us in Proverbs, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to destruction. It leads to death. There's a disconnect in our culture today. There's a philosophy that says, as long as my intentions are good, it doesn't matter what path I take. It's all about how, what, what my intentions are. You see, if I wanted to go to Kansas City and I went out here and got on I-35, but I headed north, Okay, my intention was to go to Kansas City. I got on the right road, and I was just going the wrong way. Guess what? I'm never going to get to Kansas City. I had the greatest intentions of getting there, but I was going the wrong direction. One uh, summer a few years ago, we got in our car on a Sunday afternoon, and we were headed east. We were going to the east coast. And somewhere around the Quad Cities, I don't know how many of you have traveled the path there, but... Um, we were driving along, and it was a nice, another nice sunny afternoon, and we were playing on, turning on the radio, listening to, and we got this radio station that had Casey Kasem playing the top 40 music from like 1983. It was like, ha, ah, such a great day. <laughs> Casey Kasem, you remember him? What, what was the show? What was the show? Help me out. Whatever, Casey, yeah, whatever it was, top 40. So we're listening to that, just driving along, and next thing I know, I mean, we're driving along, and I can't remember the town. I looked it up uh, before service, and I still can't remember it. Galesburg, Illinois. We were going east, but I found myself, like, Galesburg, Illinois. I, I, all of a sudden, I'm going, Galesburg, that, that doesn't sound like it's supposed to be. That, that's not on my path. That's not on the road where we're going. And all of a sudden it dawned on me, we're two miles outside of Galesburg. I've been on the wrong road for about 30 or 40 miles. And when you're on a, when you're on a trajectory and you're going, I need to get there by this time, all of a sudden now I'm at least an hour behind. Casey Kasem is long gone on the radio and it's like now I'm left 30 or 40 miles to backtrack because I took a wrong turn. I didn't make a turn, I think is what happened. I just stayed, I don't know. But it was terrible getting on the wrong path. My intentions were to go east, and I found myself going south, all because I wasn't paying attention. You see, direction always trumps intentions. Teenagers, someday you want to marry a godly person, okay? You can't just date anyone that comes along that looks cute, shows interest, and expect for that to happen. You may want to have a healthy sex life when you get married. You can't just practice with anyone that comes your way. You have to practice with the person that you spend the rest of your life with, okay? That's how you do that. For those who are married, you can't have a healthy marriage and a healthy sex life if, you're, if you have an addiction to pornography, okay? It's a path that will lead you in a wrong direction. There's way too many people struggling silently with that. And today, I want to say, today is a time for, for you to change that direction. You've gotten off on an off-ramp of this highway to holiness, and it's time to make a decision to get back on that highway of holiness. Today's the day. You can make that decision today. I encourage you to. I challenge you to. You want these things for your life. You want to be close to your family. You want to have good relationships within your family. You can't work all the time and ignore them. You want financial security, but you, you can't just go out and load up your credit card buying everything that your eyes see. You say you want to know God uh, better, 
You want, you, want to, you want to know God, but you spend so much of your time on social media or on that app or that game on your phone or your computer or watching TV, movies, that you don't have enough time uh, to spend with God. It's about a path. It's about a direction. Your intentions will never get you to the destination because it's your direction not your intention that determines your destination. And it's not until your intentions and your directions line up that you're going to reach the destination that you want to. What's the famous saying? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Okay? Is that where you want to end up? So the question that I want to ask you this morning is, is this, the path that you're on right now, the direction that your life is heading right now, is it getting you where you want to go? Are you on that path that leads to life? Or have you made a detour? Financially, relationally, spiritually, where is your life taking you? It's your direction, not your intention, that determines destination. It's not about the moment or the immediate. It's about the ultimate. And here's the deal. We need accountability in our lives. We need people in our lives that have a perspective, much like Solomon had here, that aren't afraid to talk to us and say, that's a big mistake. That's a problem. We need people like that. And we need to welcome those people, people that can see things that we don't see, that we trust. And we ought to invite them into our lives for accountability. We need the Holy Spirit to speak to nudge us, to guide us, to direct us, to lead us, much like the, uh, those rumble strips that are alongside the road. So when you, when you feel like, you know, you're, you hear the, you ever, you've been there on the road, right, before? We're going to talk about that in the next couple of weeks. But there's, uh, there's that, that thing that happens that if you're falling asleep or you're veering off, it's saying, look, get back on the path. Stay on the road because you're nearing and entering a dangerous spot. Get back on the path. The Holy Spirit will speak to us. He'll lead us. He'll nudge us. It, but we have to listen. We have to listen to his voice, and we have to be able to distinguish his voice among all the other voices and all the noise that's going on in the world. We need the word of God. Yep. Psalm 119, 11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, we've been talking about the highway here. Life is a highway, but the reality is, is there's two roads. There's two roads that lead to two different destinations and their eternal destinations. And the path that you're currently on is leading you to one or the other. These are Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, where he says, enter the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. He's saying there's, there's a narrow path with a, with a, with a narrow gate. And there's a broad path that is paved, and man, it is a beautiful highway, shiny, smooth. It's got multiple lanes, and there's a lot of people there. He's saying, enter the narrow gate. Because the broad gate, the wide gate, the broad road, it's leading to destruction. There's a lot of people there, but it's going the wrong way. Verse 14, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. He's not saying there's a select few there. He's saying there's only a few that make that choice, make that decision. And today I challenge you to make that decision. I ask you, which road are you on? And where is it leading you? Maybe you've taken one of those uh, exits, those detours, and you're off on some road and you're not sure where you're at. You need direction. You know where you want to go, but you've lost your way. I want to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and pray with me this morning. That this morning you say, and the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you all through this service, that you're on the wrong path. And you know in your heart you need to follow the path that leads to Jesus. It's a narrow gate, it's a narrow way. The way is Jesus. He's the way. He's the only way. This morning with every head bowed and eye closed, and you would raise your hand and say, it's me, that's me. Pray with me, Pastor Jeff, because today I want to open my heart. I want to open my life. I want to invite Jesus into my life. I want to choose his way. I want to go the way that he has for me. I want to, I want to, I want to know that my destination is going to be heaven. 
If that's you, would you just raise your hand today? Maybe you've done this before, maybe it's been a while, but today you know the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and saying you need to respond. Choose life, raise your hand and keep it raised if you would. Across the room here, several hands, I see those hands. I wanna ask you to pray with me this morning. And I wanna ask everybody to join in this prayer. Pray this prayer, Jesus, I choose you. Come into my life. Save me, forgive me, cleanse me, give me hope and a future. Thank you for choosing me and making a way that I could be forgiven and have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Many of you responded to that today, and maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you prayed in your heart today. And here's the deal. The Bible says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is not an event, okay? It's a path. It's a road. It's a way. It's a destination. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is a path, a direction that you start on that has a destination that's heaven. And I just want to say congratulations because it's the greatest choice that you could ever make. Amen. You need to tell somebody, let somebody know the decision that you've made. To the rest of us in the room here, I know we're, our heads aren't bowed and our eyes aren't closed, but uh, I, just want to, I just want to make this offer because some of you today have, you veered off the, off the path. And it's, and it's temptation of a variety of different things. I don't know what it might be today, but the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. You know that you've made a detour, okay? And here's the deal. Sometimes as, as Christians, we can get a little mud from the world on us. But here's the deal. Jesus can clean us up, and he can show us because he knows the way. He is the way to get back on that highway that leads to eternal life. And that's the road that we need to find ourselves on. And if we stay on that road and we don't make these detours, it's going to get us where we want to go. And that's heaven. That's our eternal destination. That's what we're all about. That's what life here is all about. It's what we're doing in this life is determining our future from here on out. So here's what I want to ask. If the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you about something in your life, it, it could be anything I mentioned before. It could be something else. But you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I want to just invite you to stand this morning as a way of just making a statement to say, okay, this has been happening in my life, but it's going to stop. It's time for me to find my way back on that path and get on that path and get in the right direction, going the right way, God's way, the highway of holiness, no longer flirting with the highway to hell, but I'm on a highway to holiness, a path that leads to Jesus. There's more people that need to respond. And you just say, look, listen, nobody's judging you. Nobody's looking at you going, what's your deep, dark secret? Or what's your, what's your problem? What have you been involved with? It's not that at all. This is between you and God. But here's what I'd encourage you to do. Give it to God this morning. Give it to him. Tell somebody that you know, that you trust, and say, look, I need, I need your help to come alongside of me, and I need you to hold me accountable. That I'll be hearing God's word, I'll be listening to his Holy Spirit, and you can speak into my life whatever you see that needs to change. I need, to, I need your voice in my life. I want to pray for all of you this morning. If you would all just stand. Father, this morning, I just thank you, God, for the opportunity, God, that you give us, that you never give up on us, Lord, that there is a way, and you said, I am the way. There is a, a right path, and you are that path. It's a gate, a narrow gate. It just seems like, it's, it might seem like at times it's the wrong way to go because everybody's going the other way on this big, wide, beautiful road. But God, you've called us to this narrow path. You've called us to follow Jesus. You're the leader. You're our, you're our leader. You're our guide. May we listen to your Holy Spirit, your voice speaking to us. And every person that, stand in, that stood in this place today, God, that they would find strength in you, Lord, that they would find that there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, but you come in and you bring forgiveness, you bring help, you bring direction, you bring destination for us, and it settles all those things, and we want to choose you today. I pray your power, your peace, and your presence on those this morning that have responded in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We need your help. 
In Jesus' name, amen.